Hello everyone! It's Bring on the Chaos Glizzy for another What If. What if Naruto grew up to be the most deadly assassin of the old elemental nation? Elemental nation. Before we start, can you like and subscribe for more What If? If you wanted to request a new series, and if you wanted this fanfic to have full series, please comment three hearts and say your fanfic that you wanted. And yes, this is my real voice. Yeah, I'm probably yeah not you're expecting. Okay, I'm probably not you're expecting. And yes, YouTube, I am not a robot. I'm a real person. I really work hard on. I work hard. That sounds so wrong, but whatever. Please, please subscribe. Okay, commentary hearts and stuff. And yeah, participate in the community posts. So I know what you want, okay? I know what you want. So I won't waste my time for other fan fiction that I don't really need in my channel. But probably a little slip on. Like a couple. Eh, probably a lot of useless ones. Because I like it, okay? Don't judge my taste. Chapter 3 Disclaimer I don't own anything out of this. Chapter 3. Azula didn't like either of them. Naruto and Zentri were dangerous. Lee and Lo confirmed that they were dangerous and deceitful. They were not to be trusted with anything, even her protection. But while the goals were the same she would endure this. She would endure both of them for as long as she had to. She chewed on her lower lip for a brief moment as she tried to think of a way to use them other than what her father had ordered. The orders were very specific. She couldn't use them at all except when it came to how they moved around. They had say in their combat, choosing when to fight and how to fight. She could understand that part, but the other things she couldn't. Why wasn't she being allowed to use them to her whim? Why wasn't she being allowed to choose when and how they fought? Did her father believe she couldn't control them? Or was it something more? As she mulled it over, she suddenly decided to have a word with them. Finding them wasn't hard. This was her ship and she knew where everyone slept. It wasn't hard to find them either. There was a trail of blood and gore from two fools that had already tried to attack them. They weren't dead, yet. But they were bleeding like mad and were trying to get away. As the two guards passed her up, she wondered if she should just go ahead and kill them for disobeying her orders. A slow death for those that disobey, she finally thought. She walked up to their door and flung it open. The sight was not a pleasant one. Naruto was shirtless while Zentri had Shibaru on top of him, her form covering most of him from view. Naruto wasn't pleased and quickly reached for a thin blade to fling at her. I only came here to talk. No need to be hostile, she cooed. Naruto didn't look convinced. I thought we'd share war stories and precious memories together. She half lied. Naruto lowered his weapon and then sat it down. What's on your mind? Naruto grabbed a new shirt and quickly slipped it on. It wasn't his battle clothing he wore anymore. He'd switched to baggy pants with metal shin guards and ankle bracings that clamped down the end of his pants. He wore a plain white sleeveless shirt that he left hanging out. With his hair down, he looked rather strange, not like the assassin that he was. She crossed her arms and then took a thoughtful glance. The Fire Nation has a spy system in place, which I'm sure you're aware of. She began. Sentry poked his head out from under the mass of fur that was Shibaru and gave her a blinking glance. I do like to spend time reading up on all things interesting when it comes to the war. 
For instance did you know that we have information on the two of you? I would imagine so. Naruto answered cryptically. She pursued her lips together and continued. You appeared roughly two years ago on the day of General Wang's death. He was assassinated by three people, two that wore white and another that wore green robes very similar to your own. General Wang was about to lead a campaign into the Earth Kingdom territories to take his shot at the Great Wall of Ba Sing She. He was also newly appointed at that time. His promotion was something that was heard all around the Fire Nation because he was a prodigy tactician. We know that you two lead that attack and killed him. Your fighting style, while you didn't show much of it during your demonstration, proved that you are the one that killed him. Naruto leaned back, his left hand going into his pouch that now lay on the bed. Azula looked ready for a fight. Naruto pulled out a book and flipped it to a certain page. You're correct. I did kill him. General Sung of the Earth Kingdom and one of the Council of Five paid us to do that. But you're wrong. I've been here for four years but only spent two and a half years working as a mercenary. It was one of the first major missions we took up. General Sung, when we returned, told us that he doubted we'd get away after the assassination and said that he hadn't expected us to even get it done. The fact that we pulled it off gave us the start for our reputation. He answered without taking his eyes off the book. Azula nodded. It was quite a feat actually. They had penetrated one of their major strongholds without alerting anyone. The only death had been the General Wang. Yes. That was the start of your little reputation as mercenaries wasn't it? Naruto turned a page on his book as a result. Azula brushed a bang from her eyes and continued. Two months after that you took out two elite squad captions. A week after that, you took out one navy caption. Four months after that, you took out three retired generals for reasons we don't fully know. The three retired generals were killed by us, but our reasons were because of their actions during their time as admirals and beforehand. Ten women were raped by them personally, and one of them had rape a twelve-year-old. I stand against such things and thus took them out as a way of soothing their souls since the twelve-year-old died as a result. You can call your nation a great one, but when you stoop to such levels you're nothing but monsters and thugs. You're not worse than some of the Earth Nation villages that are suffering at the hands of their own troops when you do things like that. Azula didn't bat an eye to this. She knew about it and didn't care about it. After that assassination you vanished and then resurfaced little over two months ago, shortly after the death of Lyra. She was an earthbender prodigy that was beating our troops. You took the mission for the Fire Nation under Commander Zhao. She stopped and looked at the two. They didn't look impressed with her smoothing talking now. After this you took on a mission that once more had you killing one of our admirals. And now here you are. Naruto slapped his book shut and gently turned his attention to the cover. Legend of the Gutsy Ninja by Jiraiya of the Sanon, he read mentally. He looked up at Azula as she waited for a reply. You're right again. I suppose I'll have to start moving carefully again since I seemed to do a pretty impressive job evading your spy network, Azula. However, he paused as she put both arms on her hips, your way of thinking is off. We don't work like how you think. And what makes you think that I know how you think? Naruto smirked slightly. You believe we vanished from the world. Truth is we were hiding right under your noses. Did you know the best place to hide is actually right in front of the enemy half of the time? 
her lips curved into a sly smile. Naruto flipped his book open again and started reading once more. With the Fire Nation controlling little more than 60% of the Earth, it's easy for anyone to hide in plain sight. But the problem is that those who hide with a very large bounty on their heads are seen as heroes for whatever they may have done to get that bounty. Take for instance me. I've killed dozens of high-ranking Fire Nation soldiers, and I'm fairly certain that my bounty is very high. She nodded. Naruto continued. The problem with this is that I've become a legend, just like Zentrai has. And people like me become heroes for our actions. I bet that if I went to any general in the Earth Kingdom, I could get money, soldiers, and even women to follow me wherever I go just because of my past actions. Do you follow me? You believe that people will follow you just because of what you've done. Naruto nodded with a smile, his eyes never leaving the book. Azula rubbed her chin slightly. So with all the high bounties on everyone's head, like Zhou Eng Zheng, people will offer them asylum rather than turn them over. Interesting, she said quietly. I suppose in the end it all comes down to who's greedy and who's not. Naruto turned the page on his book. Azula realized that he was going to be ignoring her now and decided to leave. She made sure to have one of the guards slam the door shut for her. Turning a page on his book as the door was shut, Naruto shook his head. She hates us, he thought for his friend to read. She hates everyone but her father, Zentrai sent back. He kept his gaze locked with the large form of Shibaru. Should I start reading her surface thoughts or... No. Leave her for now. She's nothing to us for the time being. The only thing we need to worry about, are her two friends. Naruto yawned. I'm going to take a nap. Wake me in an hour or if we make port. I wanna meet these friends of hers for myself. Naruto sat his book down on the nightstand and crawled onto his futon. He didn't both with taking his clothing off. It was best he be prepared for anything since they were on an enemy ship. Four years ago. Fitting that we should face oblivion together. A dark voice cooed. Naruto was brought awake by a cold and wet cloth touching his forehead. It dripped down the side of his face and he was slowly able to make out the shapes around him. His eyes blinked in the bright light from the opened door. It looked more like a tent actually after he stared at it for a brief moment. As his eyes moved from the tent exit to the things around him, he was soon drawn to the object that had woken him from his slumber. It was a woman wearing green robes with golden trim. Her long brown hair was pulled back into a tight ponytail and her sleeves were rolled up. She was currently speaking to him but he couldn't hear her. He motioned to his ears and then tried to sit up as his eyes continued to adjust to the bright light. She somehow got the message that he couldn't hear her and moved to the side. Naruto watched her and carefully looked down at the sheets that covered him. She tapped his shoulder and his gaze soon turned to hers. She was holding a piece of paper with an ink brush. I haven't seen one of those since last time I saw Sai fighting, he noted. She started drawing on it and showed it to him. Naruto blinked at her less than ideal drawing. Not everyone's an artist, he mused while looking at the drawing of rocks, a hunched over stick person, and a stick body on the ground. So someone found me outside. She looked around for a moment and then to him. She motioned to her mouth and then to her ears and then did the only gesture that truly transcended all languages. She raised her arms and then slapped them to her side. Ha! Huh. 
she motioned to her mouth and then to his. Naruto did the same thing she did and then figured it out. She nodded with a smile and then went back to her crappy drawings. She offered one up showing food, which had him nodding. She ran off after a moment and then returned roughly eight minutes later with a plate of meat and vegetables. Naruto turned his nose up at the vegetables but happily ate the meat. He didn't know what it was, but it tasted like beef, but it was a chicken leg. He shrugged his shoulders and continued to eat. Once he was done she drew another image, this one being an image of a thermometer and a human head with dorky eyes, mouth and nose to match. She pointed to Naruto and motioned to the crappy thermometer she had drawn. Naruto figured that one out easily. I have a fever, he whispered as he felt his head for a moment. She seemed to understand that much and nodded. How long have I been here? She again shrugged, offering that she didn't understand him when she drew two stick figures, one talking and another that had question marks over its head. The tent opened up and allowed an old man that was hunched over, wearing formal robes with a metal cap on his head that had two long strands of either hair or fur sticking out. He wore fancy rings on each of his fingers and snorted when he laughed. As he spoke, Naruto became aware that, after his ears began to work, he couldn't understand him at all. Naruto gave the girl a helpless look and she spoke for him, showing all the drawings she'd done so far. The two held a quick conversation before the man gave him a snorting laugh, one that had Naruto wondering if the guy hated him or because he simply laughed this way. He looked utterly crazy. The man moved up to him and gently put a hand on his forehead. He spoke, but Naruto didn't understand him. But the man soon turned and left, leaving him in the care of the young woman. Naruto gave her a strange glance and she smiled while pulling out another set of papers to draw on. Women are strange, he mumbled before something grabbed his arm. Naruto turned to face it but nothing was there. He felt like he was being shaken at the moment. Present day. Naruto's eyes snapped open and the form of Zentrai snapped into view. We've made port, he sent to him with his mind. Naruto nodded and slowly got to his feet. You were dreaming about your arrival again. Why? Does something still bother you about it? No, Naruto answered quickly. Naruto looked around and found that Zentrai was back in his normal clothing. He wore a large black jacket-like rob that was held together by a set of buttons and a single sash. Underneath that, though unseen, was a pair of black pants, a long-sleeved rob shirt and a sleeveless rob shirt over the long-sleeved shirt. Like Naruto, he wore shin guards over his pants with ankle braces included. Sentry motioned to the door and the teen jumped out of his bed as a single guard entered. Forgive me for the intrusion, but we've made it to port, he said softly. Naruto gave a small nod and he left after shutting the door. They seem to be frightened of us, Zentrai said mentally. He had a goofy grin on at the moment. Do you think they fear me because of reputation as a silent killer or because I'm a ladies man that has more than likely pleased their ladies? The blonde shot his friend a hard glare that told him to shut up. The telepath clearly didn't catch it. I'm sure I've had sex with a few of their wives. Heel, I bet I banged Azula's mom somewhere down the road. Shut up. I don't wanna hear your sex stories. Let's just get up top so we can enjoy some fresh air and some time away from this boat. Any longer here and I might just get sick and keel over before we find our target. Naruto stormed out of their quarters and up to the deck. 
Azula was waiting for them with two imperial firebenders at her side. Naruto shot them both a hostile glare when one of them turned and offered a snort as a greeting. I assume you know where your friend is. Azula inhaled through her nose, disregarding his question. We are in a Fire Nation town and are about to go to a circus that is setting up for tonight's performance. I trust you won't do anything hostile towards the others. She was glaring at Zentri. Naruto gave his comrade a quick glance and then sighed. I assume you know he tried to sneak off with one of members of the crew on this ship. It was a female if you're curious. Naruto messaged the bridge of his nose as he said, Why can't you just pull your head out of your ass and use your head for once? Naruto was glaring at his comrade now as well. Sentry was smiling while offering up the silent message that was easily translated as, I didn't do anything. Naruto wasn't impressed. If I see you stick your dick in anything female, even if it's a female tree, I'm going to hurt you, badly. Azula smiled triumphantly at that, knowing that someone could at least keep him under control. And with the law laid down she began heading off the ship and into town. Naruto wasn't at all impressed with the town anyways. Sure it was a Fire Nation town, but it was one that had probably once belonged to the Earth Kingdom, even if it was just an island that had a single bridge to connect itself to the mainland. The five passed various people along the way, all of which either bowed to Azula as she passed, and ran away in fear at the sight of the two assassins. It wasn't very encouraging to Azula to know that more people feared him even more than her. It was downright sickening in her eyes. She was one of the two people that had the power to actually snuff him out with but a wave of her hand or a simple plea to her father. And yet they choose to fear these two assassins more than her. It didn't make sense in her eyes. But she would coupe with it for now. She had to at least look somewhat happy when meeting her friend. In fact it wasn't even hard to find her or mask her current emotions and put up a fake smile as she approached her friend. Standing upside down on two fingers, wearing pink pants, a pink shirt, and her hair pulled back into a braided ponytail was her friend, Tai Li. Azula made sure her smile was in place as she got in her field of vision. Tai Li, could that possibly be you? She had to make sure her voice was chipper and sounded happy to see her. That part was easy to mask because she actually was happy to see her. For Tai Li, she was overjoyed. Azula, she cried while jumping to her feet, turning around, and bowing respectfully to her old friend. Azula smiled at her antics and waited for her to stand again. Tai Li quickly got back to her feet and engulfed her friend in a hug. It is so good to see you. She said while releasing her hold on her. Azula smiled as the two assassins, Zentri in particular, began eyeing her. Please, don't let me interrupt your, whatever it is that you were doing. Tai Li quickly jumped back and began stretching, or showing off. She was definitely doing one of the two. Tai Li decided to lay flat on the ground and then bend backwards so that her feet were in her face. Her head was propped up on her elbows and her smile never once faltered as Azula spoke to her. Naruto and Zentri decided to hold a mental conversation of their own while this took place. She really doesn't look like much. Naruto thought. Zentri hesitated in his reply, giving Naruto a chance to continue the conversation. Then again, when I first started training with Gen Fu he said I didn't look like much. So maybe she is useful. She can contort herself in a ball. I bet she fucks like a Mousselian. 
Naruto shot Zentri a hostile glare. I wonder how tight she is. I bet she's as tight as that tree I banged while I was drunk a year ago. Do you remember that? How could I forget? I woke up to you with your dick in a tree hole and banging it non-stop until your dick was as red as your blood. Now can you please stay focused? What's on the girl's surface thoughts? Can you at least do that without talking to her? Naruto snapped back to listening in on Azula and Tai Lee's conversation. I have a proposition for you. Azula said briskly. Tai Lee started to frown a little. I'm hunting a traitor. You remember my old funny duddy uncle, don't you? The acrobat grinned. Oh yeah. He was so funny. Azula smiled. I would be honored if you were to join me on my mission. Tai Lee quickly started looking around as if to find the best possible escape route. She even stuttered with her words. I, ah, uh, would love to. Her smile never returned, not even as she jumped back to her feet and gave her friend a sad glance. But the truth is, I'm really happy here. She waved her arms around as if to show the place to her. Naruto rolled his eyes and smiled, believing that this was his personal victor at the moment. I mean, my aura has never been pinker. I wonder just how pink she is. Sentry laughed mentally. Naruto started growling at him. Azula caught whiff of it but ignored them. I'll take your word for it. Well I wouldn't want you to give up the life you life just to please me. Azula cooed happily. Lying bitch, Naruto grumbled. Tai Lee brought her hands together for a short bow as she inclined her head. Thank you, Azula. Azula smiled and turned to leave, but not before grinning and saying, Before I leave, I'll be catching your show. Tai Lee was in the middle of stretching again when Azula said this and quickly began to panic again. The five left the young acrobat with Naruto forcefully dragging his friend away. She's going to join us no matter what. Azula said darkly when they reached the edge of the forest. Naruto quickly let go of his friend and grabbed Azula by her chest piece and slammed her into the closest tree. Azula seemed to have been expecting it and merely grinned as a result. You should honor your friend's request. You can't have everything your way, Azula. I'm a princess and I want her on my team. Not like you two aren't worth something though. Her eyes landed on Zentri as his eyes glazed over for a moment. One of you is a pervert and the other is an assassin that holds more titles and names than even my father or I do. She shoved him away and he stared at her. The bloody inferno, she repeated that name like it was a second name that all children knew about. You earned that name after destroying an entire firebender battalion. And you did it in only five minutes. Get to the point. The fire princess smiled once more. Red death, bloody inferno, red demon, red devil, these are just a handful of names you've been given and yet you don't act like how the people describe you. Naruto stood up straight for a moment as she continued. You have far more names than just these, but each name has something in common, fire. Naruto snorted. Are you a firebender by any chance? No. I'm not a firebender. If I was in tune to any of the elements it would have been wind, making me an air nomad. But I can't bend anything other than the will of the people before me. I can't do the things you can do, Azula. And even if I could, I probably still wouldn't. He turned and walked off as Zentri began running towards the tents. Was staying for the show, correct? Azula nodded. It won't start for a while so we've got time to kill. 
If you need me I'll be in the forest breaking stuff. If you need Sentry, just find the nearest brothel and you'll find him. Naruto vanished in the darkness of the forest and left Azula and her two firebendering guards confused. Red Death, one of the guards spoke up. Should we follow him, princess? No. Leave the two of them for now. We'll use them for as long as we can. She turned on her heels and began heading back to the ship. Three years ago. King Bumi, Omashu's leader and the world's strongest earthbender, lead Naruto through a series of tunnels that burrowed deep under the great city. Naruto followed him without speaking. He wasn't in the mood to start talking again anyways. Even after learning the small language barrier, he was still a little confused about a dozen or so things. Yumi had tried to help him understand them, but after a few months had decided that the kind of help he needed wasn't one he could provide, and thus brought them to this secret meeting that would never officially happen. The glowing emerald crystal that hung above their heads had Naruto looking straight at the ground. They reminded him of Sakura and it hurt to know he couldn't get back to her. According to Bumi, Naruto had appeared from a beam of light during a small earthquake. Bumi believed the quake to be his arrival, and thus noted it as nothing important. But the light was one that had him hoping for a miracle of some sorts. After searching around where the light had appeared, he found Naruto passed out on the ground with a few objects surrounding him. One of them was a book and the others were weapons and scrolls. My friends will be able to help you, Naruto. Yumi said softly. Naruto's head jerked up to look at the old ruler. Yumi must have known he was looking at him because he started laughing. Always overthinking everything, they will be able to help you understand this world better, Naruto. A friend of mine has already confirmed that you can't go back to your home and you yourself said you had died at the hands of this Madara fellow. The blonde suppressed a snort and a sigh at the same time. Yumi picked up on it and acted accordingly. The people we're about to met work for the same organization I work for. With any luck they'll take you in as their student and you'll also get to join our group with a free lifetime supply of rock candy. Thanks, Naruto said with a laugh as he withdrew a piece of said candy. He stared at it for a moment before biting off a piece. It tasted like nothing but sugar to be honest. He remembered eating something like this once. Aruka had shown it to him by mixing hot water and sugar together. If you put something like a piece of string in the water, then the heat particles would actually clump and stick together on the string and produce a candy like this stuff. But he couldn't remember ever seeing one that was orange before. A loud crash sounded from up ahead and Naruto instantly went on the offensive. Yumi grinned like mad and started laughing. It sounds like they've started. Oh joy. This guy is seriously insane, Naruto thought sadly. And yet he was following him. The two exited the tunnels into entered a large underground arena with three people standing in the center of it. Two of them were teenagers, possibly no older than Naruto, while the third was an older man with thick slabs of muscle over his body, a long beard that showed proof that all his hair had migrated from his head to his chin, and wore the green pants with an open black vest. He sized Naruto up for a moment before bowing deeply to Bumi. Gen Fu, it's good to see that made it. I was beginning to worry you didn't get my message. Bumi spoke with all seriousness for once. Naruto truly didn't believe he could do it. As the man rose to his feet, so too did the two teenagers. The male wore red robes with gold trim. 
His long brown hair was pulled back at the moment so it was out of his chocolate-colored eyes. Around his feet were dozens of daggers, stilettos, and a few shuriken. He looked confused by their presence and was constantly looking around as if he was searching for a way to escape. The girl wore green robes with gold and silver trim. She wore dark brown pants with simple slip-on shoes. A grey sash kept her robe closed. Her long black hair was left undone and covered part of her left eye, leaving the right reddish amber eye exposed. The earth was torn up around her feet and she was blinking rapidly as if dust were in her eyes. Jen Fu stroked his beard for a moment before waving his hand towards the blonde. I can assume this is the boy you spoke of. Omashu's king nodded and moved to the side, allowing Naruto to face the man directly. Jen Fu stroked his beard again. His eyes softened and then a smile formed on his lips. Naruto saw something in him that quickly had him picturing the sandime for a moment. You have a very soft heart, don't you? Naruto didn't reply. I understand you are not from this world, or perhaps you are. But it doesn't matter. Do you seek knowledge from the truth of the world? Do you seek enlightenment and have the will to move beyond the pain of loss? Are you gonna help me or not? Naruto suddenly snapped. Gen Fu didn't seem pleased with his reply. Naruto inhaled deeply and sighed. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to find my way in the world. Please excuse my behavior. I'm sorry. Naruto brought his hands together and bowed respectfully to the man. His booming laughter filled the arena and the female started to giggle. You need not apologize. I am an understanding old man. Though I may not look it, I am a 59 years old. Naruto gawked and remembered that Sunid had hid her age by making herself look younger. Maybe he could do something similar. His laughter died down and his eyes brightened. I am to understand that you seek a path in this world we live in and wish to coexist with us as one. But for nearly a hundred years now we have not been as one. Yumi said something about that. He said you could explain things to me in a way that he couldn't and that you could help me get on with my life. But to do that he said I needed to understand this world before I could move on. How are you going to help me? I am going to teach you many things, most of which will be learned on the road. I trust that Bumi has had you gather your things before he brought you down here. Naruto nodded and motioned towards a pack he had on his shoulder. You travel light. Very wise when on the run. Very dumb when on a journey. But it matters not. By the time we get to where we're going, you'll have more belongs than you can carry. Then I leave him in your capable hands. Yumi snorted while laughing as if he knew something Naruto didn't. Naruto, remember what I taught you. A true master must think like a mad genius. He patted him on the back and then dropped back into the earth, slipping right through it as though it were merely made of cotton. Naruto gawked at this and then began shaking his head. He's strange, isn't he? The girl spoke up. Jen Fu gave her the slightest of nods before turning to speak with the other boy. My name is Lyra. It's a pleasure to meet you. She raised one hand and waited for him to take it. Naruto eyed her hand for a moment and then took it. She had a strong grip. Actually it was a lot stronger than most girls he'd ever had to the honor of shaking hands with. Don't let my girlish figure fool you. I'm a prodigy earthbender and apprentice to the Xing Yi Quan fighting style. Present day. 
Naruto snapped to alert status and turned his focus to the branch beside him. Raya was in the tree and looking at him strangely. Naruto smiled sadly and reached up to scratch his pet behind the ears. Rai happily accepted and soon was on the branch closest to his. I bet you miss her too. He stopped scratching her and looked to the stars as the darkness began to fall. Her show will be starting in a little bit. I suppose I should make an appearance just to keep Zentrai in line. Rai opened her mouth and began to whimper. The blonde smiled. Are you hungry, boy? Rai closed his mouth and nodded. Let's see if we can't track down something for you to eat. I'm sure this forest has something for you to eat other than roots and bugs. Rai shook his head violently with his tongue hanging out. It was just his way of saying, that's disgusting, when it came to things he didn't like. Dash. Azula calmly waited for the show to start. She rather enjoyed coming to shows like these. They were fun to watch. And it was only better when she was in charge. And with her power, rank, and royal blood, she was in charge of this little show. By the end of the show, Tai Lee would join her and they would be off to Omashu to find Mai. She knew Mai would want to come no matter what. She was probably the first to always jump at a chance to escape her family's claws and head out on her own. Her eyes danced over the inside of the circus ten and then to where Tai Lee was. The young acrobat was doing her specialty, the high wire act. She was showing suburb balance and control as she shifted from hand to hand on the array of objects that somehow defied gravity and rested neatly on the thin wire. To some it was mere magic while others looked on as if this were nothing more than hidden mirrors and wires. But Azula knew that this act was for real and that Tai Li was one of if not the best at this sort of stuff. Incredible, Azula said in mock joy and amazement. Her joyful gaze turned to the head of the circus and asked, Do you think she'll fall? She hoped she sounded convincing with her fear and worry for her friend. Of course not, he spoke quickly and tightly. It was best not to anger the princess, but this was his performer she was talking about and he was deeply prideful of her skills. Azula smiled. Then wouldn't it make it more interesting if you removed the net? He gawked at her. Ah, the thing is, the performers, he stammered out before being interrupted by the princess. You're right. You're right. That's been done. She smiled and waited for a moment. She had to make this sound convincing. I know. Set the net on fire. Of course, princess. He quickly shot to his feet and did as he was instructed. Naruto and Zentrai watched in awe and amazement. Not for what Tai Li was doing, but for what the circus leader just did. Tai Li's pretty incredible, Zentrai sent to him. Naruto gave him a sharp glance as he watched his friend munch on some popcorn, feeding Shibaru between handfuls as he did. She's currently thinking about what a bitch Azula is. Though, that's not her direct thoughts. She's just muttering stuff about how she should have taken the offer before all of this. You don't say? Naruto sent back. A wide assortment of exotic animals was soon released and the place was soon turned into a zoo. Rai began hungrily licking his lips as he spied some tasty turtle ducks waddling along the floor. No, Rai. Leave the animals alone until after we leave. You can take one of the freaky bunnies as a meal when this if over. Naruto stole some of Zentrai's popcorn and stuffed it into his mouth. You think Azula's crazy for doing this or that we are for actually going along with the idea of working with Ozai's daughter? 
I think we are since we're even here. I mean, I couldn't find a brothel. What the hell were we thinking when agreed to go with his daughter in the first place? She's nuts. Literally. Look at her. She's not a lesbian or anything. The best I can tell, she's in love with her own father, hates everyone else in her family, totally despises this girl for standing up to her and telling her she wanted to remain here. So what the hell is wrong with us? Naruto offered him a flat look. I was talking about the mission. Not your sex life. But my life is based around sex. Naruto still gave him a flat look. Unlike you, I know how to use my penis. I'm sure that Saigai did as well with all the penis jokes he made to you when you first met him. Go back to eating your popcorn and dreaming your wet dreams about these two girls because you know you ain't getting any from either of them. The two watched the rest of the performance with great enthusiasm. Once it was over, Zentrai threw a bundle of black floors to the young lady as she took a bow between the stampeding creatures that ran amok of the place. Azula clapped and cheered for her friend. We are so doomed, Naruto finally spoke. Dash. Azula walked aboard the ship with Tai Li behind her. The helmsman gave her a quick bow before he was ordered to take him out to sea. As he left, Rai and Shibaru stood ready by their masters in their respectful assassin attire. Naruto was leaning up against the wall by the doorframe while Zentrai was squatting beside Shibaru as she licked the blood from Rai's latest kill off his hands. Hands. Rai looked content with the knowledge that there was now, one less bunny creature in the world. I'm sure you've heard of them, but you should meet regardless. They will be working with us as well. Well. Azula motioned to the two of them, forcing them to do their own introduction. Naruto sighed while rolling his eyes. My name is Uzumaki Naruto and my friend here is Zentrai. He's a perverted mute and if you wake up naked and are in pain, you can inflict as much pain on him as you want since he probably raped you. The mute gave his comrade a harsh, but hurt, glare as a result to this. But we're assassins and our duty is to locate a special target that has been evading the Fire Lord for a while now. Since we'll be working together, I have only one thing to tell you. Don't get in my way. Naruto hastily turned and walked into the ship with Rai following right after him. Sentrai gave his friend a quick glance before returning to his task at hand. He's not very friendly, Azula spoke up. She wasn't speaking for him, she was just stating it. No. Tai Li said with a shake of her head. He's just angry about working with you. His aura is darker than normal, meaning he's angry. His aura was centered on you, meaning he doesn't like you. But he had no problems with me even when he spoke to me. In fact his aura seemed to brighten for a moment. She explained. The telepath blinked and then looked to Shibaru. Tai Li smiled. But as for you, Zentrai, your aura is brightly colored, meaning you're extremely happy. She smiled and gave him a thankful expression. It's so good to have a few boys on this ship that are our age. I hope we can get along. Show me your tits, he sent to her in the hopes that she would obey his command. Tai Li scratched her head and looked around. Did you just hear someone asking us to show our tits to someone? She asked. Azula gave her friend a strange glance before heading deeper into the ship. She needed some rest. 
ordering that idiot around had made her tired and with Tai Li now a part of her little group she'd need all the rest she could get. Tai Li was extremely hyper and would run her down rather quickly if she wasn't careful. The young acrobat watched her go before her gaze turned towards Shibaru. Shibaru whimpered and ran away with Zentrai instantly following after her. Tai Li blinked in confusion. Most animals like me. I wonder what the deal was with that thing. She shrugged her shoulders and trotted off to find her room or Naruto. Since he could talk, she figured she might as well make their introduction a little better. He was on their team and she would have to work with him. Two months ago. Naruto and Zentrai both walked out of the tent with their eyes staring down at the ground. Zentrai had bruises on his bruises and looked like he was about to pass out. I can't believe she's gone. He turned his eyes towards the weeping children as they left the Fire Nation docks. Commander Zhao had paid them in full for their business and was personally going to let them leave. As they walked out of the iron gates and onto the road, Naruto was left wondering if their choice had been the right one. I can't believe she's gone, and before I could screw her. Is that all you ever think with? Lyra is gone and all you have to say is that you wanted to have sex with her. What's wrong with you? She was our friend and our comrade and we hurt her. She's gone because of us. I know that. Why do you think I'm pretending to not care? Shouldn't you be pretending not to care? We scammed them and now she's gone. She'll never be seen again and the world will think she's dead. That's what she gets anyway for leaving us in the first place. She should have stayed with us rather than go out on her own. This is as much her fault as it is for accepting the mission. The only good thing about this is that we got paid and she's not a threat to us anymore. She was never a threat to begin with. And now she's missing an arm. Naruto hit Zentrai over the head, causing Rai to growl in delight. Shibaru started whimpering. I'm sorry, Shibaru. We won't fight anymore. We're just tired and hurting. Sentry moved over and scratched her long ears. We should head back to Omashu and see King Bumi. I heard he needed to talk to us about something through our spy network. My spy network. Not yours. Whatever, we just need to go see him and figure out what. Present day. Hi, Tai Li spoke low enough and yet loud enough for Naruto to hear her. He had his back to her and was back to his civilian clothing. Naruto cocked his head to the side as he turned slightly just so he could look her in the eye. She began to fidget. She'd heard the stories about them. They were the kind of stories that were often told by war veterans to scare other soldiers. And there was their reputation as well. So she had a good reason to be frightful at the moment. Naruto turned away and started reading his book again. What do you want? He wondered if he sounded angry with her. If he was he didn't mean to. He just wanted to read his book. I thought that since we'll be working together, we should try to get along. You know, be friends. Naruto turned a page on his book. In my line of work, I don't have the luxury of having friends. She deflated for a moment upon hearing that. Naruto picked up on it and rolled his eyes. He was sounding a bit too angry at the moment. I'm sorry. I'm just not used to having people wanna talk to me for prolonged periods of time. You seem to the be the first outside of the organization I work for that is. He snapped his book shut and turned to face her. He tried to be cheerful. What do you wish to talk about? Well, 
How did you meet Azula? Are you her boyfriend? No. I met her through her father. I'm an assassin after all and we've been paid by Fire Lord Ozai to find a specific target and bring him to him. He prefers alive but dead will do just as well. We have orders that allow us to handle all combat situations while Azula handles the mode of transportation. He can't afford to offer up one of his ships to two assassins that have dealt him heavy blows in the past and thus wants to keep his resources as close to home or in the war as much as possible. He just doesn't like the idea of forking one over to us for our own uses. That sounds reasonable. I can understand where he'd be coming from and all. But what I don't get is how you two manage to be friends. I watched your auras change colors when we met on the deck. Your aura kept changing from a hostile one to a calm and center one. Why is that? The former Jinchuriki closed his eyes. My friend is a mute, but he can speak by giving off small vibes. I've worked with people that couldn't or didn't talk as much as normal people do and so it's easy to understand what they're talking about when they're not talking at all. It's sort of hard to explain but we've just understood each other through this method of talking even though he's not actually speaking. I understand. She all but shouted this. She was really energetic. She calmed down and looked him over for a moment. Are you from the Fire Nation? Naruto looked down at the book in his hands. I suppose so. I was born in a country that was under such a name at one time. So I suppose I am from the Fire Nation. But where I'm from they called it the Land of Fire. He forced a smile and she seemed to buy it. I'm actually a ninja from that place and I grew up in the shadows of society sort of. We ninja don't like to be seen and tend to stick with our comrades only. The war was your business. Not ours. I can understand that. The war is our way of showing our greatness to the world and our desire to share it with them. But lately, she looked away as if she wanted to say more. Naruto picked up on it and spoke for her. All you've seen in the devastation left in the wake of the war. She nodded sadly. You regret what's being done and wish you could stop it but you don't want to go against your people. She nodded again. Don't worry about it too much. There's no point in overthinking the small things. But you should feel proud to know that you've done no wrong thus far. The blonde yawned and Tai Lee soon followed suit. We should get some rest. I have a feeling that tomorrow will be very busy for all of us. She bowed deeply and ran off. Naruto watched her go and got into his bed. Azula's boyfriend, Zentrai said quietly to his comrade. Naruto started growling. I bet she'd burn you alive just for taking her virginity supposing her dad hasn't taken it yet. Go to bed, Zentrai. The mute started laughing as he too slipped into bed. Thanks for watching please subscribe and like this video if you want some more what if video comment 3 hearts for more what if.